Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this video, I'm going to go over a grade 11 chemistry lab that I do with my students on stoichiometry. It's a bit of a mystery lab. So what I'm going to be doing is taking sodium bicarbonate or baking soda and heating it. And the question is, what are the products? Now I have four possible answers here. One, two, three, four. Which one of these is going to be the product or products in this reaction? Alright, so the first thing that we notice about this mystery is that in every reaction there's carbon dioxide as a product except this last one where there's only oxygen. So why don't we do a gas test to see if we're going to get carbon dioxide or oxygen. Now the gas test I'm going to do is I'm going to use lime water. Now if carbon dioxide mixes with lime water we get a precipitate. So here's what we're going to do. I've already placed some baking soda in this test tube and in this one I have lime water. So we're going to heat this to get the reaction and we're going to let the gases flow into the other test tube to see if a precipitate forms. If it does, we have carbon dioxide. If it doesn't, we don't have carbon dioxide and we know it's number four. So let's get started going to put on our safety goggles. Light our Bunsen burner. and start heating. You can already see some condensation, so we know there's a gas forming. Condensation is most likely water, but let's continue to test for carbon dioxide. All right, let's see if we get a precipitate. Three, two, one. All right, and there you can go. Maybe easier to see against my black shirt, but you can see the swirls forming as it goes down. So we got a slightly clouded color of a precipitate. So we can clearly see we get a precipitate. So we have carbon dioxide. And you can probably guess that that condensation is water. So we have water. But just for now, let's cross off number four. It's definitely not number four, probably not number one, but we're still going to test for number one. So how are we going to test? I'll show you. So what we're going to do is for numbers one, two, and three, notice that there's only one solid that forms. So what we can do is, using stoichiometry, as long as we know exactly how much of the reactant we have, we can theoretically calculate how much of this solid product we will get. If you're not sure how to do that, you can check out this tutorial I made here on stoichiometry. So in our lab, what we're going to do, and this is very similar to the setup anyways, is similar to our lab on magnesium oxide, we're going to take a crucible, we're going to measure the mass of the crucible. 
Then we're going to insert about two grams of baking soda. We'll measure the mass of that together so we know exactly how much baking soda we have. Then we will heat it to cause all the baking soda to react. Then we will measure the mass again to figure out exactly how much of the product we have. Now, we know theoretically how much we should have based on stoichiometry, and now we know experimentally how much we get. Well, whichever number is that closest to, that's the number that we have, or that's the reaction that we have. So, let's start. We'll go zero. The mass of the crucible is 11.855 grams. So mass of the crucible, 11.855 grams. Mass of crucible. All right, so let's put in about two grams of baking soda. And let's measure this again. So that's 13.6. That's just under two grams, but that'll work. 13.643. So 13.643 grams is the mass of the crucible and our baking soda. All right, now we need to react it. And then once it's fully reacted, we can figure out the mass of the crucible and the products. All right, so that was a good seven or eight minutes of heating. Should only take about five, but just to be sure, most of it should have, or all of it should have reacted by now. So we're going to turn off the Bunsen burner. And before we measure it, we're of course going to let it cool for a few minutes. All right, now it still could be hot, so don't grab it with your fingers. We're gonna use our crucibles to grab our crucible tongs. We're going to use our crucible tongs to grab our crucible. And let's measure its mass. All right, so we're at 12.966. So now we have a mass of 12.966 grams. And that'll be the mass of the crucible plus our product. So we've clearly lost mass. So you can determine how much mass is in the products, how much mass was in the original reactant, and see which equation closely measures the mass of the product in our experiment to our theoretical calculations in our stoichiometry. Tell me in the comments which equation is the one that best described this reaction. And if you enjoyed that and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe.